And we're back with more of the Pope on Film. This this podcast is inevitable. And he is a very ASMR. Nice ASMR, Thanos. Yeah. Goodbye. Bye, Thanos. And thanks for stopping by. And we're back. Hooray. Uh, thank you, Max. Oh, Maxwell. Hi. Where where, where have you been? I, yeah, I don't know. Uh, well, now you're blurry. It's time, buddy. It's time. It's time. Yes, Bunny, my friend, it is time once again for all of us here at the Pope on Film podcast to moonwalk our way into the second act of the show. And it is said second act, wherein we finally and eventually get around to discussing our all new extra strength and now available without a prescription movie of the week. And this this week is the first time this year. Uh, in January, in the year of our Lord, 2023, the first episode, wherein we take a deep, deep dive into the strange and esoteric world of film. And this time, it is the utterly batshit, bizarre, early 80s slasher, I guess, a film called Blood Bee, which is free on YouTube somehow. You should watch it. It's insane. Uh... I say the first film where we take a deep, deep dive into the strange and esoteric. This is not a concrete, but what I would like to do is throughout this year, 2023, we watch uh, a popular movie, a good movie, a mainstream movie. And then after that, we watch some of the weirdest shit we can. Yes. And so last episode, we watched Marcel the Shell with Shoes on, one of my favorite movies of the year. And so uh, this week, we're doing a bizarre film called Blood Beat. Uh, this movie does not give a fuck what you think, what you want, no. what you're looking for in a film, what you think a film should be. What the rules of cinema are, what makes sense, or how much glowing is too much glowing in a horror film. This movie does not care at all. Bunny messaged me <coughs> and said that Bloodbeat glows more than the movie Xanadu. And I'd like to add to that Bloodbeat glows more than the gorgeous ladies of wrestling. Although I still think Jeannie has the quote. Yes. This is a really good movie if you don't watch it. Yeah. Yeah, if it's just on, then yeah. Oh yeah, this is a wonderful movie. I like the fact because that, she was she was liking the music. Yeah. <clears throat> and what I was noticing is that for a lot of the beginning of the movie, nothing was happening except the music. Yeah, that's a good point. I like the fact that for my graphic on the screen, you use the movie Tombstone because I have been to Tombstone a lot. Tombstone, Arizona is in the southeastern corner of Arizona, right next to Douglas, Arizona, which is where my grandparents lived. Yeah, And so I spent a lot of time in Tombstone. It's really weird because you're walking down the street and then, oh, there's a Circle K. There's a 7-Eleven. There is a Carl's Jr. And then you take a right and okay, there's a uh, there's a a bank and there's a movie theater. And then you take a left and here's the street exactly how it's been since the Wild West times. Yeah. And no cars are driving. Everyone's riding horses and everyone's dressed in old time. It's a real weird trip. Uh, Tombstone is crazy. Uh, wow, I would love to go there high. Uh, <laughs> now that I think about it, that would be crazy. Um, this movie is utterly bizarre. Bonnie, I've got a question for you. How many, like in your life, in your lifetime, uh, how old are you? 42? In your 42 years of life, 
how many samurai induced orgasms have you had? Uh, 37. 37. 37? Yeah. Uh, that's a good number. Uh, I really got into Kurosawa for a while. Ah, yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. I love the mom, and I love the fact that you have a picture of her, so that this makes it better. She looks like one of two things. Number one, you tried to buy Shelly Duvall on Wish. Yes. And number two, that is... Bert the Muppet definitely came out of her JJ. Yes. She she's got a huge, especially in that picture. She's got a huge Bert vibe. She looks like she would traumatize children enough that they would grow up being really into pigeons and bottle cap collecting. Yes, that is, that is who that woman is. This, uh, this, just in general, the acting I found really kind of strange because. All of the acting was very one note. Yeah. But they kind of played that one note fairly well. Yeah. Yeah. This movie feels like... one like... girl was there just to get hysterical and be hysterical. Yeah. And she was pretty good at being hysterical. This but she movie... was hysterical the whole fucking time. Yeah, this movie has a vibe, and the best way that I can explain it is this is Troll 2's cousin. It's not Troll 2's sister. It's not Troll yeah. 2's brother. It's not Troll 2's father. No, distant cousin. Yeah. Because this is a film made by foreigners in America with an American cast written by a foreigner. This is basically a, a drug addict from France's impression of what the Midwest is. Yes. That's what this film is. Y you know what else this movie gave me vibes of? Larry Cohen. Yeah. Like I could watch Blood Beat and God Told Me To in a double feature. And if you told me it was made by the same person, I'd go, okay, whatever. Sure. It's enough glowing. Yeah, true. I can kind of see that. Did we do God Told Me To? Did we? I uh, think we did. I don't, I'm I not feel, sure. I, I don't feel think like so. We did. I feel like we did because Andy Kaufman's in it. And I feel like, I feel, I don't know. Dang, I'm going to have to go back and see. Okay. Um. And now I'm pissed off. So I went to the website Letterboxd, which I never do. Uh, and I pulled some reviews of this bizarre 1982 uh, oddity, and I'm going to hit you with some reviews. Okay, Bunny? Okay. Okay. A rural Midwestern translation of Hausu. Okay. Yeah. I love that. I, love I can kind of get behind that. A no-budget regional slasher sought in some... Shot in someone's backyard. Nice. Yeah. There's weird movies, and then there's Blood Beat. And this last one is my favorite review of Blood Beat. This is basically <laughs> this is basically the shark sandwich of reviews. Okay. Yes, in Spinal Tap, uh, your album Shark Sandwich. It was just a two-word review. It just said shit sandwich. So my favorite review of Bloodbeat on Letterbox just says drugs. Okay. And that is exactly it. That is exactly it, just to be clear. So, so yeah, uh, what I'm saying is, the point I'm trying to get across here, convey, is that the 1982 film Bloodbeat is fucking weird. Bunny, what are your yes. thoughts on this movie? What are your thoughts? It's enjoyably bad. Yes, yes, it's enjoyably bad. 
it's Troll 2's cousin. Once, and that's once we kind of get going, and it has a kind of slasher vibe in that I really wanted to see them all die. It felt like it, this was, this did come out in 1982, right about the time that the slasher genre was like coming into fruition. But it, it, looking at it now, so far removed from when it came out, the the movie feels like it's the 80s and they're making slashers and the directors are all saying, uh, okay, so here's the premise. If teens have sex, they get killed. And then Bloodbeat said, hold my beer. Yeah. How about people get killed and then there's sex? Yeah. You know, like, oh, he put a twist on it. He put a twist on it. I, sh- I, sh- I watched... Uh, this is Spinal Tap with my kids, and they did not give a crap. But I was surprised at how much of that movie, it had been a while, I was surprised at how much of that movie I still have memorized to a T. But, yeah. And also, let me just skip to the end. Who names their dog Chooky? <laughs> I'm so confused. I'm so in the weeds with Chooky. Why did you name your dog Chooky? Where did that name come from? Why Chooky? I'm so confused. You know what this movie gave me vibes of, especially in the kitchen scene where uh, the supernatural entity is throwing things all over the place and Pat's uh, Pat's pots and pans. I said Pat's and pawns. That was amazing. That's why sitcoms are dying. Uh, that whole scene gave me vibes of Trumpy. No. Yeah. So so there's that too. Hunter boyfriend Gary has some real big stepfather vibes. Yes. Oh, this is my mom, and this is my stepdad, Gary. Gary's a dick. Plus, he, he, you know, it, to keep in the Trumpy uh, uh, mindset, uh, Hunter boyfriend Gary does look like he has a real huzzah vibes. Can you stop licking on the side of the screen? This is the internet. We want people to see the podcast, but not for this. I am serious, okay? You stop doing that. Stop. Stop. I am serious, Eleanor. I am serious. Okay? I will say I had more fun with uh, Bloodbeat than I did Skinamarink, but that's different. Funny, here is your biggest challenge. The biggest challenge ever. Okay. Can you tell us the plot of Bloodbeat? Yeah, no, not really. Uh, <laughs> the... the, the... Spend way too much time setting up very strained drama, uh, and you you find out what each one of their their characters are. So you know we, we have fairly calm boyfriend. We have hysterical girlfriend who was hysterical right from the beginning. Your mom doesn't like me. And she was fucking hysterical about that. And she stayed hysterical through the whole thing. Uh, Mom's nuts. No, mom has psychic mind powers. And she's nuts. Don't you hate it when your psychic mom spies on you having sex? I hate that. Yeah. It's like, damn, like, like, uh, everyone in the family needed to wear Magneto helmets. Yes. Dad doesn't know how to express love. Yes. You know, uh, kind of typical shit. Uh, and they go hunting and hysterical girl freaks out. That they shot a deer while hunting. (laughs) 
You know, yeah. I mean, I mean, like, I, I, I don't understand. Like, like, what did you think hunting was? Like, this is like if you asked her bowling. And then she freaked out because you threw a ball at some pins. Yeah. It's like, what did you think was, was going on here? Yeah. You're going hunting. She was hysterical about that. Uh, <clears throat> there was a guy with a, with a sucking chest wound. Yes. I, I, I really don't know what he had to exactly do with anything. But there was a guy. He had a sucking chest wound. Yeah. I, I think they dealt with it somehow. Not really wow. clear how. But we can assume that the situation was dealt with, I guess. Uh, and then there was a killer ghost samurai. Yes. Like you get. Sometimes, you know, like, sometimes you just get them. Like they didn't, they things. didn't read an ancient book or uh, wash nope. an ancient statue or, you know, anything, any of the normal things that one might do that releases an ancient evil. None of that was done. It was just the samurai. Well, according to according to Wikipedia, the girlfriend was th the reincarnated spirit of the samurai who brought it into the house. But also the Wikipedia plot synopsis says that um, during the attacks, she levitates in the air. Bullshit. She's jilling. <laughs> she's not. She's jilling off. She's not uh, levitating in midair. She's no. preparing a yummy, yummy taco as a midnight snack for the Wisconsin samurai. Yes. Uh, who names their dog Chuki? I'm pretty sure that's the last name of the guy who invented Gumby. Yeah, probably. Art. Art Chuki. I love this movie so much. It is so bizarre. And also, to be clear, let's do some let's do some stats. 1982 supernatural, nonlinear, orgasmic slasher, I guess. It's an international co-production, get this, between Paris, France, and rural Wisconsin. Yeah. Which is ironic because I am currently working on a film. It's an international co-production between London, England and Tucson, Arizona. It's called A Spot of Tea and Chimichangas. And it's about a British lord named Sir Thomas Frederick Theodore Wifflebottom III. And he visits Tucson and then a bunch of just a bunch of cholos just beat the shit out of him. Yeah. It's three Very hours and nine, it's three hours and nine minutes long, just like Babylon. And uh, the majority of the film is an uncomfortable close up of the beatdown. It's kind of like the rape scene in Irreversible. OK, Gaspar Noe. He is a uh, he is a filmmaker that I recommend all of my enemies go and watch. <laughs> Hey, people who hate me. Hey, people who hate trans people. You know what you should do? Go see Irreversible. Great movie. Laugh Riot. You'll love it. After that, there's this drama that won a bunch of Oscars. It's called a Serbian film. You should see yeah. that, too. It's a fun one. It's a fun one. Have you rolling in the aisles? Uh, Blood Beat was written, produced, and directed by a guy named Fabrice Anji Zafiratos. Holy crap, was that a spell? Did I just summon a demon? Quick, honey, get me some salt! 
<laughs> Shit! I think I summoned the demon that killed Mary Winchester! And yeah, he was on drugs when he made this movie. <laughs> In fact, apparently the title Bloodbeat is allegedly a reference to the accelerated heartbeat that you get while you're tripping balls in rural Wisconsin. It makes sense. Like, you see this bizarre, obscure 80s horror slasher film and you go, wait, did an orgasm just summon the vengeful spirit of a dead samurai to a random house in the middle of Wisconsin? Is there a ghost that throws cans of tab at people? What the hell is going on? And then you learn, oh, the director was a French druggie who decided to make a horror film under the influence in rural Wisconsin. And you go, okay, well, that kind of makes sense. Okay, then. Yeah. I'm seeing this film in a bit of a clearer light now. <laughs> Um, here's another way you can tell that the writer, director, producer of this was on drugs when he made the film. Uh, the director of photography, whose name I won't say because I'll probably summon another demon, he mistakenly thought that he was filming a made-for-TV movie, so they filmed Bloodbeat in full screen for over two weeks before the director realized the F-up and that's why this film isn't in widescreen. Okay. This film was meant to be seen in theaters, but they fucked up. Because they were high. I love that. I th the reason why I think that, that, that uh, Bloodbeat is Troll 2's cousin is because, you know, here is a... French person under the influence making a film in the middle of nowhere America about what it's like to be in Wisconsin and it's like like okay the acting in Troll 2 isn't the same as the acting in Bloodbeat and the script for Troll 2 isn't the same as the script in Bloodbeat but there's a there's a there's a vibe yes there's just a vibe and it's difficult to explain but but you know, this this is some random demon summoning druggy Frenchman's understanding of what life in America is like. And this movie is a trip, and I think more people should watch this. I love it. It's bad. Don't get me wrong. Yes. This movie sucks. But it's free on YouTube, for Pete's sake. You know? But everybody gets psychic powers in this. Yeah, everybody. And everybody, everybody glows. Everybody glows. Everybody glows, Georgie. Everybody glows down here. What was it? It was my brother, my brother and me who did this long bit about it. And it's like, uh, you know, Pennywise is like attacking people in like the 1950s and 1960s because it's like you couldn't get kids today. Yeah. Hey, Georgie, come on down to the sewer. I've got a paper boat. Really? I've got a fucking iPhone. Yeah. Everybody, come over here. Let's beat the shit out of this sewer clown. Like, you couldn't do that now. But he here's something weird, Bunny. Yeah. Uh, going way off script, uh, Eleanor believes that Pennywise is real. Okay. Eleanor, uh, my littlest, she's six. She believes that Pennywise is real, number one. Number two, that there's a bunch of Pennywises, that they are different colors depending on their their uh, what type they are. Yeah. Oh, this one's a friendly one. That's why it's a blue Pennywise. Oh, this one's red. You got to watch it. Oh, no, this is this. And and here's the thing. They all live in different sewers. Uh-huh. So we'll just be going for a walk around the block and it's like, oh, that one's a yellow Pennywise and he lives there. And so it's so weird. But um, also, um, she's been leaving food and drinks for Pennywise. OK, so she's like, other mother, can I have some <coughs> grapes? Sure. You want to eat some grapes? No, I want to put them in the sewer for Pennywise. And it's like. 
okay, sure. Yeah, okay, I'm going to get you some grapes so we can go outside and put them in the sewer so Pennywise can eat them. That makes perfect sense. Do you have any do you have any sodas that okay, I have this peach water drink that Amber gave me that I have no intention of ever drinking. I bet Pennywise is going to love it. Let's pour it down the sewer for Pennywise to drink. Dodge that bullet. And, <laughs> and uh and yeah, it, it, it I'm learning so much about the Pennywises cuz we have a we have a sewer grate right in front of our house, so we've got a Pennywise just right there in front of our house. It's kind of nice having a Pennywise there. Sometimes Eleanor will talk into the sewer. Pennywise is just her friend. Okay. To be fair, I just want to be clear that this isn't... I am not to blame for any of this. This is all Mal. Oh, okay. This is not me. This is all Mal's doing. How can we pin it on him? Uh, because he's the one who's just... He was obsessed with it for a while. Remember when, when oh, Mal right. was obsessed yeah. with it? Because yeah. Mal gets very intensely hyper-focused on things for a while. For a good while. It was uh, the movie The Batman, and that was surprising. That was really surprising. And then... And Christian then they transition. No, no, the Batman, the Rob Bat Battinson one. Oh, that one! Like they were obsessed with that movie for a while, and so that was surprising. And then uh, they transitioned that into the show Gotham. Gotham. Like Gotham was on TV twenty four seven in this house. Really, for like a couple of months. And and. Uh, Mal got really obsessed with uh, the penguin, and it's like, please watch Batman Return with me. <laughs> please. Because your like your version of your version of the Riddler is uh it Paul Dano, and your version of the penguin is a skinny, effeminate gay guy. Please let's watch DeVito together. Yeah. Oh, but first he has to fight the clown gang. And, and then after that, we're watching Jim Carrey. Knock it out of the park. <laughs> but they won't watch those ones. So no. we haven't gotten there yet. Or or the absolute classic Batman and Robin. Best Mr. Freeze ever. <laughs> the only Mr. Freeze ever. <laughs> oh, come on. It was Otto Preminger. Yeah, there was Otto Preminger. Sure. Uh, this has been a great episode of the podcast. Eleanor, Eleanor, do you want to talk to Bunny about Pennywise's? I was talking about you and Pennywise's. Can, can you tell us what colors mean? Come here. Can you? If you want to, you don't have to. Don't touch. Can you? Come here. If you don't want to, you don't have to. But I know there's different colors of Pennywise's. And we were talking about you're a fan, you're a fan of Pennywise, yeah? Okay, so there are different colored Pennywise's. What do what do the colors mean? The colors mean what they want to eat? Oh, okay. So, like a blue Pennywise. What would a blue Pennywise want to eat? Okay. Uh, hold on. Freaking. Okay. There you go. Ten minute so, warning. Okay. So, so a a blue Pennywise would want to eat blueberries and blackberries. Okay. What would a red Pennywise want to eat? Strawberries. Strawberries, yes. Yeah. Okay, what about a what about a chartreuse? What about a chartreuse, Pennywise? What about a green Pennywise, but not not forest green, not hunter green, Kelly green? Purple. 
Vegetables. Okay, nice, nice, nice. Good job. Okay, so we've learned a lot about Pennywise. And we've learned a lot about what French people think uh, Wisconsin is. Yes. What? What'd you say? You whispered Pennywise directly into the microphone. Okay, cool. Uh, poor Eleanor was born with a disease that you may have heard about in uh, Woody Allen films where, uh, sadly, she was born unfocused. Yes. We're very sad about it. We've taken her to a lot of specialists, but she was born unfocused. And, uh, you know, sometimes she'll have her moments where yeah. she'll come into focus. But most of the time, uh, now Maxwell, <laughs> Maxwell is, is better at being focused, but Eleanor is just... Oh ah! <laughs> yeah, it focused on you for a second there, Eleanor. Oh, oh, there you are. Nope. Ah, yes. We're having fun with the. Uh, this is this is a. Uh, the edible has kicked in. Hi, Mal. Okay, so that's it for. Oh, oh, it's not you. It's not Mal. It's it's you. Okay, I I I can't see because. Okay, so. Stop speaking directly into the microphone. You're gonna you're gonna deaf people. You're going to deafen people. Yeah. What? If you want to, yeah. Go for it. Oh, okay. I don't think Bunny heard you. I don't think Bunny heard you. I don't no. think Bunny heard you. That's okay. Uh, all right. This has been a very strange episode of uh, the Pope on Film podcast. You can tell when the edibles kicked in for sure. Uh, uh, the Batman is a good movie. Fuck you. Yes. Fuck you. Aha. Uh -huh. Is this is this you? Yes. Oh. Oh. Okay. I. Oh, this has been Mal uh, spamming us this whole time. I I kind of thought so. Okay, I, I hadn't been reading it at all. At all. Yeah, okay. So there you go. Uh, <laughs> it, the people on SoundCloud are going to love this episode. Uh, so that is it for Bloodbeat this week. It's a bizarre movie. It's on YouTube. You should watch it. It's weird AF. Um, next week, we're going to go to a more uh, well-known film, even though it's still a strange one. We are going to be watching one of my favorite films of 2022, the low-budget A24 British comedy, Brian and Charles. Okay. It is waiting for you on the Cough Cough Bunny. It is an adorable film about this stupid inventor who makes a robot. That's the entirety of the movie. But it's done in a really cute way that I can't fully explain in a way that gives it justice. But it's a great movie and it's fun. Guys, can you not fight while I'm trying to do the podcast? Okay, Eleanor hit her head on the chair. So y'all need to stop. Okay, it's all fun and games until someone pokes their eye out. Okay, stop it, Chewy. So uh, next week, we are going to be doing Brian and Charles. We're also going to be discussing the true story of America's first mockumentary and the trouble it got into with the U.S. government. Uh, but now that I'm looking back, that's next week. Now that I'm looking back at this week, the highs and the lows, the ups and the downs, uh, Dead Samurai and um, Letterboxd and... King Kong and Grimace and Tostitos. Go get yourself some Tostitos, people. I gotta say, I think this has been a pretty good episode of the podcast. <laughs> this has been a damn good episode of the podcast. So until next week. Oh, that's you. You say that, Bart. <laughs> the edibles have kicked in fully at this point. Oh, Eleanor, stop. stop. Eleanor, stop. So until next week. I am Bunny Williams. And I am Reverend May Lynn. And on behalf of Mal and Natasha and Max and Eleanor, I just want to say thanks for listening. 
and we will see you next week, you godless heathens. And you douche waffles and poopy tits. And you ninjas. <laughs> what did you say? Did you say Pennywise again? You did? Okay, there you go. Do 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 do